Now the results of this video really surprised me because this is the most accurate comparison between Forza Motorsport and Gran Turismo 7 when it comes to the Nord Life. Which game has the most accurate depiction of the Nord Life in their game? And we are using real world stills and images from the most recent Nürburgring 24 hours. And like I said, the results surprised me. So how did I do this? Well, I did a free play race in Forza and a custom race in Gran Turismo 7. So I am driving live both of the cars you see here. Uh, they're each a Ford GT, the same car. And I want to start off here on the pit straight because you can see that it's going to be a little bit of a theme sometimes in this video about the lighting and different aspects to lighting. So this being a race, Gran Turismo have filled up the grandstands. That's not something they decided to do in the time trial. That's up to them. So we have four grandstands in both uh, uh, games here and you can see absolutely filled to the brim in Gran Turismo arguably slightly less populated on the left hand side in Forza some people are uh, sitting down whereas in Gran Turismo everyone is standing for the start of the race and actually on the right hand side here it looks to me like the uh, pit, de uh, pit detailing in Gran Turismo 7 is actually more detailed than Forza there's more going on now you can see some very nice ray tracing from Forza and the lights there but the actual population of body seems to be better in Gran Turismo. Some other small details as well you can see that the start lights are still on in Gran Turismo they are off in Forza and if you look down the straight you can see the unmistakable Mercedes logo and that is something that really pops out from real world footage here so you can see the grandstands are not full in the middle of the night for the, even the Nürburgring 24 hours um, but in Forza and Gran Turismo they are packed. The Forza does a Really interesting thing in lighting here that I don't think is super accurate, which is that it really tries to light a lot of the off-track areas, including the grandstands. And I want to explain why I have a little bit of an issue with that. So again, look on the left-hand side here, you can see the grandstand and falls are lit up and loads of people in Gran Turismo. There are people, but it's harder to tell. And I have uh, actually done a few 24-hour karting races in the UK at quite large tracks where there are big stretches of the tarmac that are away from the paddock and you definitely go into areas that feel a long way away from civilization and you're left with your own thoughts and uh, the Nürburgring 24 hours definitely is the biggest example of that sort of race in the world but in Forza you never really get that sort of respite from the bright lights and here's a great example you can see Forza have added floodlights at the front of the grandstands and they've also decided to light the grandstands uh, with the floodlights at the rear where Gran Turismo has very 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 dark areas on the uh, on the grandstands there so this is Forza right now and look how much lighting is it'd be really annoying to sit there you'd have these bright lights focus on you where Gran Turismo leaves all that focus to the track I feel so Forza is showing you all this stuff around the track whereas Gran Turismo is sort of narrowing your focus as to what's going on the track and that feels more realistic to what we see and in the real world footage and this is actually a theme i'm starting to appreciate at gran turismo where they have an element of restraint they don't really show you everything and some of the stuff they do show you is quite important you can see here it's a great i mean it's a great view from both cars um as we look up and see the sign and you can see actually more stars in the sky in forza so i started both these races at midnight and I ran them at 24 times uh, progression of time. And you're going to see that has been treated differently in both games, which is very, very, very interesting. But as we saw in the time trial in Gran Turismo, where they didn't pack out the grandstands at all, they sort of seem to be curating a feeling where Forza wants to lay everything on the table face up, if that makes sense. So more detail here, more lighting, sorry, in Forza showing more detail. There is detail in Gran Turismo, but you just can't really see it because that's not where the lighting is. So a subtle difference there. And I think it comes down to this feeling of Forza wants you to be the hero, wants you to feel like you're the hero. Whereas Gran Turismo, you're just in another race. And uh, I find that interesting. You see the back of the grandstands here as well, all nicely lit up. There's a Ferris wheel in real life that is not apparent in both games. So that Ferris wheel is up at the 2023 Nürburgring 24 hours. And... There we go around the back of the grandstand very different lighting so we do have ray tracing in forza because we're running on the 4090 i have had some people saying oh why don't you run actually really say why don't you run forza on an export series just to make it a fair comparison look i'm running these games the best they can possibly run on the best hardware i have available 
I'm not going to turn down one over the other. It doesn't matter which one. I'm not paid to do this. I've no, you know, the, the, the games don't know that I'm making these videos. I'm just showing them in the best possible light each one um, can actually do. Um, we are in gameplay at the moment. So that means no ray tracing in Gran Turismo 7. Not something that Digital Foundry made super clear, I think, at the time. But there's no ray tracing when you're actually driving... Um, even if you're in the highest resolution mode, which I am, that comes in the replay. So you can see here, here's the grandstand in Gran Turismo that is not full uh, by the pits of the Nordschleife track. It is full in full zone. There's people waving flags. But actually, when I looked at the footage from the Nürburgring 24 hours in the night, it wasn't full at all. So again, I think Gran Turismo have made an artistic decision there to not fill that grandstand. And it, make, it gives you a certain feeling when you enter the main Nordschleife track here on the right hand side, we can see more track furniture appearing in Gran Turismo than in Time Trial. You do get even more than that in certain very limited championship races, like when you do the champion, the final race to complete the game. And I have a video on that, but it's interesting that they still so, uh, show some restraint there. It's almost like they want to really elevate those experiences. So looking down here, this is where we sort of look back on the Nürburgring GP circuit. A really interesting view. And you can see a lot of track objects visible on both sides, including the Mercedes symbol in both games, which is important. If one of those Mercedes symbols wasn't visible, I'd definitely be calling that out. Now, again, see, look at the lights in Gran Turismo as they cast the lighting on the trees. Very different to Forza. There feels like a little bit more chromatic aberration or sort of depth in the lighting that you don't really get in Forza. But what Forza Motorsport definitely nails is the feeling of these neon lights... Uh, by the side of the track there's going to be a couple of moments where I'm going to show you that and they are really impressive but there's also going to be some moments I show you some areas where Forza really has done some bizarre stuff when it comes to the track detailing that I don't think is very accurate which is um, arguably the most important thing so we can see in Gran Turismo we have a couple of stewards here by the fencing that we don't have in Forza and something else I've noticed is in Gran Turismo if you look a lot of the fans will be looking at you um, they'll be right up against the fencing, sort of looking at you. Whereas in Forza, so you see on the right side, Gran Turismo, they're looking. Whereas in Forza, they're sort of just milling around. But we come somewhere like this. I mean, you tell me. You tell me in the comments which one is more accurate and which one just looks better because we've just seen the real world footage. You do get those neon elements. And for whatever reason, Gran Turismo have decided to not put neon elements there in this race which I find surprising and gives a very different vibe. So Forza, you feel like something's going off by the side of the track. There's people standing around. Some people are looking at you, but a lot of people aren't. Whereas in Gran Turismo, pretty much everyone is looking at you. I mean, look there, there's a stage in Forza and that iconic Nürburgring Nordschleife map over the German flag is there. And you really do notice those as you're driving. So as we continue into the forest, we're going to see what happens when you get away from the grandstands, away from the fans. Look at this light here on the left-hand side. You can see that just there in the footage. It's not lit up at the top. But quite an accurate rendition, I would say, from both games, actually, of this part of the track. Forza adding some sort of flags or whatever you call those like weird flag things. That is a bit unnecessary. It's a bit too much Forza Horizon for my liking. Gran Turismo here you can see the, the the glare on the back it's a very different vibe Forza the lighting seems to be a bit more sophisticated around the rear of the car I have to say but they they just decide to light more of the track there was a light there that wasn't in Forza there's another uh, wasn't in Gran Turismo there's another two lights are in Forza that weren't there in Gran Turismo you can see in the real Notch Life doesn't really appear to be as many lights as we have in Forza so interesting stylistic choice I thought this is a great one Forza, you're on TV because you're the main hero in your in your movie. Gran Turismo, you've got stewards. That, to me, emphasises the, the philosophical difference between the two games, in my opinion. Very similar views now as we go down this far section of the Nord's life. And yes, it is me driving in both of them. I have driven this track in real life, but uh, it didn't help me here. And I'm going to talk about handling in this video later on, actually. I have some interesting thoughts about handling that I hadn't really appreciated before as we come up behind this Toyota Supra in real life now have a look it's carefully raked almost bunkers in Grand in a Forza I should say and in Gran Turismo a lot more of a plane of view but I'm getting more of a vibe here it, it, the lighting because it's more it feels more baked in 
in Gran Turismo, it just feels more curated, the lighting. Like, they really want to tell a story with the way everything's lit. It's very dark backgrounds, um, you know, silhouettes of the hills in the background. It's very ominous where it falls, it sort of blends in a little bit more. More detailing here. We've got an ambulance and some medical equipment. Very detailed. Gran Turismo, we've, we've just got the two same stewards again. As unfortunately falls, I have a little bit of an incident. Suboptimal, definitely for the lap. Gran Turismo showing some sparks. Again, a good example of the restraint that Gran Turismo does there. Just a few sparks, whereas Forza is happy to sort of end the world in crashes like those. Again, some more neon lighting in real world. You can see some graffiti there showing in Forza. And if I remember, there's a 2023 sort of uh, marker on the track as well that you can see in Forza. So keep an eye out for that because that shows when the track was really scanned. This is an interesting one. Falls are very, very, very bare here. And this is not a bare area in real life. Gran Turismo put some people on the fence. So what's going on in Forza? Why have Forza decided to not put people here? So rare track detailing uh, omission, I should say, by Forza. But you can see there is some graffiti on the barrier. I'm having a look at the ge geometry. A bit of a weird geometry there in Forza, the way the barrier goes, that we don't have in Gran Turismo 7. Again, we're coming um, down this part of the track. We're going to hit some track objects on the outside and also the inside. So let's see how the games deal with it. But it appears in real life like you're going into the darkness. So there we go on the inside in Gran Turismo. Nothing on the inside there in Forza. There might be a slightly different part of the racetrack, actually. And now we see on the outside again this colourful lighting. So this is real well. This is accurate lighting. And uh, let's see what both of the games have done because Gran Turismo have added some trackside objects here. Let's see. Uh, but not quite, actually, oh yeah, not quite as much. We've got the grills going in Forza. The Bratwurst is uh, being eaten. Gran Turismo a little bit more restrained. I mean, is that silly to have those sort of balloons there? Maybe, I don't know. Forza's added another light. Gran Turismo, there's some cars visible, as you would expect. People right up against the fencing in Forza. People more concerned with having a good time, maybe. So, it's... It, very interesting to see this. I want to talk a bit quickly about uh, shadows here. Have a look at the shadows on the right side in Gran Turismo compared with the shadows in Forza. Again, it's a bit more stylistic in Gran Turismo. It's been a bit more ominous, that Mazda RX Vision casting a huge shadow ahead. And now in the really plain part of the track, a rare area where Forza hasn't done too much lighting. But again, more lighting here from Forza. It's almost like they're afraid of letting the game get too dark. Now we can see here... There's not really that sort of floodlighting on the track. There are these areas where people are staying, people are chilling out that sort of pop out from the background. Coming down here and again, another example you would not have expected from my previous video of Forza just not doing the track objects and Gran Turismo has a nice pocket of people watching. Imagine if I do a sick move into there and I just feel like these people are watching. That's pretty awesome. But here we go, Forza now. I mean, this is... And this, I'm telling you, when you drive this at nighttime in Forza, with the way the neon uh, lights the track, the green spills, it's like if you walk past a pharmacist um, in the snow, sort of green from their light just illuminates everything. It's, it's quite a powerful emotional effect, I find. In Gran Turismo, again, we've got more cars visible. It feels a little bit more homebrew. When Forza, there's a, there's a huge amount going on. I mean, I played like, I mean, I played Hitman and Tomb Raider. And there's less sort of people in the crowds in, that, in those games than you get here in Forza. Forza really have gone hard on that. In Gran Turismo, you can see people waving a little bit, which is cool to see. And in Gran Turismo 7, I think the people do walk around as well. In Forza, they don't walk around. So a lot of detailing going on here by both games, but a different sort of vibe. They feel a bit closer to the circuit in Gran Turismo. It's like a football stadium where they're right by the pitch. And uh, very different hit here with the barriers on the right-hand side. It was a little bit more open in Forza, dare I say. And again, there's more lighting in Forza that is not necessarily accurate. There's a Marshall's post there in Gran Turismo that you don't get in Forza. And look at this. It's a bit more of a vibe for me. This feels dark. It feels ominous. I have done the Nürburgring 24 hours in iRacing, uh, which is, you know, will be more accurate than both these games in terms of the actual uh, track undulations because it's fully laser scanned and it's just 
I think it will be of a higher standard anyway. And when I've done the Nurburgring 24 hours, you feel in the middle of the night in a 3 a.m. stint, you feel like you're inches away from a big crash at all times. It's, it's quite a weird experience, actually. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it. As so we tear through the forest here, see the over illumination of, of, the, of the rear lights in, in Gran Turismo is a little bit too much. Not sure why that is. And now Forza, I mean, Forza for me looks really good. When they don't add the lighting, Forza looks really good. So they add this artificial lighting. And arguably, it's, it's that artificial lighting that's causing problems here. Because in Gran Turismo, it looks like the headlights have a just general wider illuminating effect. Whereas in Forza with the ray tracing, the headlights look like they reflect off objects around them more accurately. But we're going to go up to the iconic... Um, carousel now it's going to call it the horseshoe like i was at daytona the most famous corner in motorsport the carousel and you can see here some more track detail but i'm not talking about handling here as we go to carousel i was playing both these games on a pad no headphones on uh, and i just put on automatic gears so very different because normally i'm running forza motorsport on my moza r16 direct drive wheelbase with fantec v3 load cell pedals normally i'm driving gran turismo on my logitech g pro 11 newton meter direct drive full base and low cell pedals but i've decided to go full casual and i had so much fun driving these tracks to make this video like i genuinely can't explain how much fun i was having it was so much fun but we're going to go into the carousel here i'm going to tell you about the, the handling where we get to a bit of a quieter point in the carousel we saw in the daytime video both games done a great job of scanning this but how does it feel so here we actually have more graffiti in Gran Turismo that's visible um, it seems to be slightly less sort of um, accurately lit perhaps than in Forza if that makes sense. Forza only really shows it when the light is cast from the headlights onto it and reflects back to our eyes. There are some stylistic choices about the cameras as well in terms of the field of view and the lens and the aperture that we can uh, infer from that as well. Now at this point I did start to notice that the sky in Gran Turismo was getting lighter than in Forza. Remember, I started both these races at midnight with 24 times time progression. As we're going to see, both games interpreted that instruction a little bit differently. You see, again, this is an area where Forza have not added any track objects. What a change from the time trial. So Gran Turismo deciding to deploy it right now for the custom race. And I feel I respect that more. Because I've been here in the time trial with no fans, got no fans. And now I've got fans watching. I feel like I want to up my game and I feel like a hero as I go off the track here and no doubt going to crash and go straight into said fans. A little bit embarrassing. And uh, but I'm, loving For I'm loving Forza when they're restrained on the lighting. I have to say, like, look at this part here. This, this is where Forza looks its best. I just wish they would do that and have less floodlights and rely more on sort of the neon lighting from the side etc just sort of uh using the ray trace to the best effect you can see here gran turismo has lit up that area way more than we were seeing at the beginning of this video so it's a little bit of an inverse here where forza feels more realistic arguably because it's a little bit dark a little bit obfuscated whereas gran turismo has really lit up this area artificially and that's not what you get in real life as we see from the real world clips you sort of don't get that illumination really visible from the cockpit. Now definitely keep an eye through the next few corners in terms of the track width and the grass and everything like that because you can see it seems to be a bit wider there in Forza from the track to the barrier which is a bit weird. So for the rest of this video in these twisty parts definitely keep an eye on the geometry of both tracks. But look at this, it looks amazing the way the trees are lit in Forza. So maybe it's just artistic decision making that has affected that as we come down here and you can see some detailing on the left hand side and we take the right hander here, grab the left hand side, such a fun part of the Norse life, a real rock and roll roller coaster of a ride through here and this is what it looks like in the dead of night in real life, very 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 dark, very dark. Um, so more stuff on left hand side here in Forza. Loads and loads and loads of stuff. Very different vibe here. Makes you feel like there's a big event and sort of you're part of it and that's exciting and feel proud. Not making all this stuff up. This is really what I believe. If you've watched my video and uh, my channel over the years, you know I'm very sort of uh, 
interested to understand what emotions these games want us to feel. There are definitely two emotions now because the sun has come up in Gran Turismo and having done some stints in, tw in, in real world 24 hour races, I absolutely love the sort of 4am stint where you're in there and you see the sun come up. It really is majestic. Uh, again, very different shadowing. I know there's not a car in front of us in Forza right now. You can see Gran Turismo is casting these big, arguably simplistic shadows. Whereas Forza was doing it in a little bit more of a strained way. As we go onto the Dutton Jaher now, the big old straight. How is this going to feel in both games? Do you feel the different emotion you're getting in Gran Turismo? Gran Turismo is sort of like, you've made it through the night. Light times here. Look at the, uh, is that the cast on the right hand side there? You can see visible in both games. Down the straight at night time, you just be really focused on the track in front of you. Maybe doing some radio, adjusting some uh, stuff on your steering wheel. How does it look in both games in comparison? Well, very hard to tell now in Gran Turismo because of the sun coming up. And uh, interesting that it didn't come up in Forza, even though both games started at midnight. Under the Bilstein Bridge, accurately represented in both real life, as you would expect from real life, and in both games. By the way, please make sure you're subscribed if you like these videos. Because very simply, if you like them, I will make more of them. I'm a, I'm a simple man like that. So going on to the uh, last corner here of the Nord Life, where we go straight on instead of taking the right hand side. And you can see, again, it's going to be time for another lap. I would love both of these games, by the way, to enable us to do team endurance racing and team swaps. I think if one of them can add 24 hour endurance racing, it will force the other game to do it, in my opinion. So let me know in the comments which one you preferred. I hope you found this comparison helpful. Interesting to have a different time of day at the end of the video. I really enjoyed making it and I will see you next time.